We have over 35,000 medium format negatives. Some of the most striking images in this collection are of Grand Canyon and the Colorado River. And one of them in particular is of the spot where Glen Canyon Dam is constructed. And it's the before image, pre-dam and post-dam. And then other images that we have of the changes in um, the Colorado River corridor are striking and show the differences in vegetation, differences in sandbars. Repeat photography came about through the work of a Bavarian mathematician in the late 1800s. He was using photo surveys um, to study glaciers in the Alps. And then it was picked up by glaciologists in the US and it progressed from there. Repeat photography is the technique of taking multiple photographs at a particular location. It's used to assess ecological, geological, hydrological change in a landscape. This particular archive originated at the Desert Laboratory in Tucson on Tumamak Hill. And it came about through the work of Dr. Ray Turner, who was a USGS botanist. The collection grew through the work of Robert Webb, and he worked with Ray Turner assessing channel change in rivers, especially with regard to the Colorado River. Well, I was working in Grand Canyon starting in 1984, and I came across this guy by the name of Robert Brewster Stanton, who had the second successful run of the Colorado River following Major Powell. He was in 1889, 1890. He was an engineer. He was trying to document a railroad passage through the Grand Canyon. He took photographs roughly every mile, upstream and downstream. So it's a beautiful set of, uh, of photographs to work with. I started using repeat photos in the Grand Canyon in order to document debris flows. But then you start looking at these photos and all kinds of stuff starts showing up and it just becomes an adventure of discovery. One of the things that I remember being struck by more than anything else was cryptobiotic soils, or now known as soil crusts or biological soil crusts. They were looked the same a hundred years later. I mean, it was stunning. People have been concerned about biological soil crusts for decades, about people trampling it and making it go away. And there've been all these claims about how long-lived it is. Well, we can demonstrate how long-lived it is. And that's the point of repeat photography. You can actually demonstrate this stuff as opposed to just guessing. I became interested in repeat photography actually as a result of the work of, that Bob Webb did. You know, learning, for example, that these little shrubs had been living in the same spot for over 100 years. Visitation of people in the river corridor could unknowingly be destroying plants that had been there for over a century, several centuries in some cases, just with a, a mis, misstep. That really um, opened my eyes to how powerful repeat photography can be, not only for talking about change, but also talking about what hasn't changed. You know, we'll pull out the photograph and we just start scanning the, the horizons and trying to find the general location. And I've been down working in the Grand Canyon for over 40 years now, so I have a pretty good idea of where things are just looking at a photograph. Just getting to some of the places can be uh, a challenge into itself. There was one photograph that we matched. The image uh, shows this wide open beach. Well, trying to get to the same spot to match that image required one of the most challenging bushwhacks I've ever done. It's a little bit like an Easter egg hunt. It's actually a lot of fun, uh, as well as being really challenging. And so the collection is now over 100 years old. We have over 100 years of imagery, and it spans work um, in the larger Southwest. And we're in the process of digitizing it and protecting the negatives. The one thing that I find so powerful about using 
peat photography is that you, you don't have to be a scientist to be able to, to see a photograph and see with your own eyes the changes that we often try to translate into graphs and charts and, and numbers. It's, it's a really powerful way of communicating. It levels the playing field for everybody. They can all see the same image. They can all interpret the, the results from their own background and perspectives as well.